We have all been there. Catastrophic thinking can be overwhelming. And when it's happening, it's hard to focus on anything else. But is it possible to retrain our brains so that we can overcome this often challenging obstacle? Here to answer that question more, psychiatrist, Dr. Christy Lamb. Dr. Lamb, welcome to Med Circle. Thanks so much for having me, Kyle. Always a pleasure. Yes, it's so great to see you. Let's start with the definition of catastrophizing. It's a word we've all heard, but really what is it? So catastrophizing is when we get up in our heads and our thoughts and we go to worst case scenario. So um, some of my younger patients will call it future tripping um, and going to worst case scenario. So it's thinking that when I engage in something, the worst case outcome is going to come in. So I don't leave any space for a potential um, good outcome or even that I could navigate it. It's going to, uh, catastrophic thinking often results in not just the, ba the worst situation, but there's nothing I can do about it. So it can lead to hopeless senses of helplessness and hopelessness and really dump into depression. It commonly comes up when we're anxious. We get anxious thoughts that then can we can get stuck in these ca catastrophizing thoughts, but really can be a slippery slope into depression because if all that we can think is catastrophic outcomes, we can feel really stuck, which is a hallmark of depression, a feeling like I am trapped and there's nothing I can do about this, that helplessness and hopelessness comes in. Is, this, is catastrophizing a type of cognitive distortion? It absolutely is. So in cognitive behavioral therapy, we talk a lot about different types of cognitive distortions and catastrophizing is an extremely common one that is kind of tricky sometimes to see because we may be thinking that when we're in it, we can really believe it to be true. And we can think this, no, this has happened before, it's gonna happen again. And our brains can kind of create, unfortunately, like a snowball effect that we not only are catastrophizing, but we really believe in this thought. So in cognitive behavioral therapy, one of the key things that we learn is how to observe our thoughts, to be able to see them for what they are and to create some space to notice, oh, there I am catastrophizing. And when I have that space, I may have the potential then to do something about it. It was a fabulous series on cognitive distortions. We go through 19 of them. I will tell you that when we went through all 19, I raised my hand and said, yeah, I've experienced all 19 of these. And I think most people have throughout their life. Becoming aware of these cognitive distortions is a game changer. So we'll link to that series in the description of this video. Let's run through a hypothetical example of what catastrophic thinking looks like and how it would be different than just typical, quote, normal worry. Yeah, so someone with catastrophic thinking, maybe perhaps in the workplace, is about to go into a meeting and have a presentation. Mm -hmm. The thoughts that they're going to have in cat when they're in this catastrophic thinking are that everything is going to go the worst to the worst possible outcome. So an example of that may be my PowerPoint's probably not going to work. Um, I don't know if I can speak. Everybody's going to hate it. Um, I'm going to get fired. Right? It, it it can snowball that as we have this catastrophic thought, it can make us more anxious and bring in more catastrophic thoughts. So it may start right. with is my PowerPoint, I might have anxiety, is my tech gonna work? It's probably not, everybody's gonna hate me, I'm gonna get fired, and really can quickly spiral to worst case scenario. And all of this is coming up because there's some kind of anxiety about presenting in front of other people. And so getting very clear that often our catastrophic thoughts are just a signal that we're anxious is really, really important so that we can then again intervene, noticing when we're having these catastrophic thoughts, what they look like for us so that we can then intervene on our own behalf. My next question was going to be, well, and what do we do to, quote, retrain our brain and stop catastrophizing? But it seems, though, that the catastrophizing, the catastrophic thinking, rather, is, like you mentioned, a way to look at our anxiety. So if the way to notice our anxiety, then what is our next step after we know, after we realize, oh, this is because I'm anxious? Well, now what? Well, so fortunately, you're bringing up a great point that there's kind of multiple intervention points. So we might initially, first we have to notice. 
We have to get clear, I do this thing. I catastrophize and I go to worst case scenario. Once I notice it, there are some things that I can do just with that thought. Cognitive behavioral therapy gives us lots of options about reframing, cognitive reframes, working through and thinking about alternative options. Well, what if my PowerPoint does work? Maybe they're actually gonna love it. Do I have any evidence that shows that I've you know, horribly flubbed every time I've ever, or have I, have I been fired yet, right? All of the things that we can question the reality of this thought. So that's working with the actual thought, which is absolutely helpful and can be very useful. The other thing that we want to acknowledge is that these thoughts come up in the context of anxiety. So acknowledging that we're anxious can also help regulate and distract away from these thoughts so that we can actually pay attention to the physiological experiences of our anxiety that may be guiding us away into these different rabbit holes of catastrophic thoughts. Because likely there's some feelings that come up about presenting, about past experiences we've had about presenting. And so being able to create um, a real clear understanding that this isn't necessarily based in reality. I can challenge these thoughts. I can regulate my anxiety, know how to take care of myself if I'm feeling popped, and then get clear what is it about presenting that might have me get so anxious and then go to these catastrophic thoughts so that I can work through that and create an environment where presenting doesn't feel as anxiety provoking, that I can create a safe environment for myself so that I can feel really comfortable presenting and doing the work that I need to do. That makes sense, Dr. Lamb. Excellent as always. And of course, as Dr. Lamb mentioned, these techniques are based on cognitive behavioral therapy or CBT. We have a fabulous series on that. We'll link to it below. It features triple board certified forensic and neuropsychologist, Dr. Judy Ho. Dr. Lamb, always great seeing you, especially when the topic of anxiety comes up. You always have something fabulous to say, but thank you for that. Thanks so much, Kyle. Thank you for watching. Make sure to subscribe to this channel for new videos each week. Remember, you got this.